Okay, and now we're in part two of uh, this video series, and we're going to be covering autofocus and how it all works. So last video, we covered shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And the next thing that is obviously important is uh, your autofocus and making sure you're using the right settings for your autofocus. Now, there's a few settings for autofocus that you need to keep in mind. Uh, I don't have a lens attached, so it says manual focus right now, but obviously the first thing you need to make sure is that on your lens you have it set on AF for autofocus and not MF for manual focus. Uh, manually focusing for sports is pretty much impossible uh, unless you're a badass veteran then yeah it's it's very difficult to do manual focus so I highly suggest you do autofocus for sports so make sure the autofocus AF mode is turned on on the lens that you have attached to the camera so got that out of the way next we are going to go over uh, the autofocus modes and there is where is it right where the heck is it it's here somewhere I gotta find it. I think I need a camera attached. I'm not sure. I think I do. Yeah, there's a, there's a mode on this menu where it'll say one shot and uh, AI servo or AI focus for some of you Rebel users or older camera users. Um, for Nikon, I'm I, so sorry. I don't know the, the term for it. Um, you can look it up it, on Google if you put AI servo for Nikon and they'll have the word. But for Canon, it's called AI Servo. And like I said earlier, there, are, there is an AI Focus. Don't use that mode. Um, it, it's useless. Use AI, AI Servo. AI Servo and One Shot. The difference is One Shot is when you hold your focus button down. If you're using the front focus, we'll, we're going to go over that with back focus as well. But if you're holding down this halfway before you take a picture and you focus on One Shot, it's going to focus one time and that's it it's done and if you want to be able to track something and continue to focus on something that's moving you go to AI servo and turn on AI servo you hold the shutter halfway down and as you hold that and as you're following the subject with your focus point on the subject it will follow him and focus on him now the cheaper the camera the more difficult it's going to have tracking something that's moving and be spot on, especially in situations where it's going to be low light, like nighttime, or you're indoors. It's going to have the camera, if it's a cheaper end camera body, it's going to have a more difficult time. And even with the 60, the 60 is a great camera, but when it comes to tracking and the autofocus system that the camera has, it's not the best. So if you're looking to buy one, I would I would not suggest the 60. Um, the 60 is good for portraits and weddings and stuff where it's basically posed and set up. For action, it's not that great. I would suggest a 5D3 if you're on a budget or a 1D Mark IV used on eBay. Um, I mentioned the price on that earlier in the, the previous video, but check, check those out. Those are great cameras. Or maybe even a 1D Mark III. I've heard great things about that camera and it's much cheaper. Um, just there's a lot of options, but if I was to suggest anything, it'd be either 5D3, 1D Mark IV, or 1D Mark III. The, the 1D Mark IV and 1D Mark III are only available used. They discontinue them because the 1DX came out. But yeah, check those out. So anyway, we're gonna go into um, uh, we got AI Servo covered. So AI Servo tracks moving subjects, and uh, that's what you should use for your focusing and how that works. Now, next, we're going to go over focus points. Focus points is when you look through the viewfinder, you have all your different focus points, and every single camera has a, a limited amount of focus points. I think the Rebel has like nine, there's just like one, two, three, four, like five, or something like that. They have a couple little ones here and there. Uh, and as you can see on this one, it's got quite a few. I believe there are 64 or 61 autofocus points on this camera. Same with the 5D Mark III. But, and what that means is obviously the more you have, the more you know a variety you have in you know you have a lot more to choose from to where you want to put your focus point at this little thing moving around is where I'm putting my focus point at and that is where the camera is going to focus when I hold down my AF on button back here this is called back focusing and I'm going to go over that in a little bit but yeah or you can hold this halfway down but um so that's this is I would suggest you manually pick the one I know a lot of people that turn on all their uh, autofocus points do not do that. Just turn on one and put it somewhere 
maybe on the side on the right side say you've got a, a football player and he's running down the field and he he's a running back and he's running down the field and you're tracking him going this way like this if you keep the the frame the, or the focus point on the right side then you'll get a good isolated shot of just him running and keep him over here because he's facing he's running this way and you want a little bit of room over here for him to run or another thing you can do too if you want to get like uh, more action in your frame you could put it over here and have him uh, kind of in the middle-ish or over towards the left more if he's running this way and give it a little room behind him for like a player to tackle him or something but this just lets you see, see you're, you're telling the camera where you want it to focus and opposed to having just every single one turned on. The camera's not going to know where you want it to focus at. So that's why this is important. So make sure you have it on single. It's not bad either to do like a group thing if your camera can do it. I do this quite often. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. It just lets you, you, the middle one is the main focus point, but it gives it a little more like support to in that general area. So. That's another thing that's good. So yeah, make sure you you set it to be a manual focus point so you can control it. Uh, and then the last thing that we're gonna cover is your uh, the back focus I mentioned, the uh, halfway down focus that I mentioned. So what this means is if, normally when you get a camera, everyone knows that if you hold this halfway down, it'll focus and then you push it down and it'll take a picture. I would not suggest doing this. There is a way I'm not sure if the Rebels can do it. I'm pretty sure they can. I just I don't know if they have the AF on button. If they don't, then that just you know you're 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 only you're limited. But if if you have a button back here that says AF on, uh, and Nikon has something similar, I'm pretty sure, or if not the same wording on the button, there is a back focus button here. For Canon, you just go into this little thing right here where it says Custom Controls, and then you can go right here. It has the little shutter button right there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And you just push it, and I have it to metering start. I turn off AF start. AF start is meaning you push it down halfway, and it's going to begin its autofocus start. I have it on metering start. And then to get this button back here to autofocus now, all you do is go down to the AF on button, and just turn on autofocus start. And that's it. So that's it for this video, and I hope it helped you guys out. Um, have any more questions, feel free to ask me, and happy shooting. See you guys later.